32 degrees. Boys got the shorts. I ain't playing games. We ain't playing games. Ooh, we here to win, bro. So y'all better get out of the way, cause it's about to get messy. <laughs> This is just one thing that people like really need to know when it comes to the cop. Well. 32 degrees, your boy's got the shorts on. <laughs> What's up? Can I just put you here for a minute? You guys cool chilling there? Boop. What is up my brothers and my sisters? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Chris. We do Mark 7 GTI content. We're building my GTI here on the channel. We go fast, have a good time. If that's something that interests you, go down there, a little scrolly scrolly, hit that subscribe button, join the family, we're going fast. And we just keep on moving, bro. If you want to support the car community and the potential growth of the positive environment of it, join us. I'm feeling great today. Uh, we got, you know, another foot and a half of snow last night, but it's really warm today, so a lot of it melted and the roads are halfway decent. <sighs> it's like really nice out, actually. I'm kind of hyped. So other than the car being disgusting, maybe we'll uh, wash that later. Ooh, you see that little two-step, that little two-step diffuser? <sighs> Dude, I'm hyped about that. That came out dope. I'm not even going to lie. I ain't even capping. It's like a little lower than the other one, but I kind of like it. It like offsets it a little bit and makes it a little more... I put that day, you know what I'm saying? The back looks good. For those of you who don't know, go check out my last video. I did like something plasma cutting and stuff and I made these custom diffuser fins to go with my strafe diffuser. So I made it a little bit more aggressive. So if you like that, I'll put a link right here. Go check that out. Now that we got business out of the way, how you guys doing? I hope you're having a good day. What is good? Welcome back, my gangsters. What's up? Today, we're talking about a very hot topic in the car community. That has to do with tuning, reliability, issues, problems. We're talking about the Cobb access port. Let's go! In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about thing, like the one thing that really, I don't think people actually understand when they go, this is for like newbies to tuning and stuff like that. If you already know about all this stuff, totally disregard all of this. And this is not my personal opinion. And this isn't any problems that I've had with Cobb. This is literally from their forums. And I see the question pop up again and again and again, like, is it reliable? Is it safe? Is it good to run Cobb tunes? Are the off the shelf maps any good? Do they, are they even worth buying? Should you just skip right to it? Do like a Unitronic uh, uni plug, anything like that. I'm totally aware of all these other tunes and I'm not like reviewing this in any way. I feel like this is just one thing that people like really need to know when it comes to the Cobb. Now, if you're coming to this video, a Subi bro, a Porsche guy, a GTR homie, uh, what else do they make it for? The Mazda Speed 3 and I don't know, but they make it uh, the access port for all those models. So if you're coming from a different platform, I'm not specifically talking about the GTI, but that's where my knowledge is relevant to. So just keep that in mind. If there's any little things different, let me know down in the comments. Specifically, when you're tuning with the Cobb access port and you have a DSG. And we ran into this problem with my buddy Cole. Uh, we filmed the video a while ago. I, it was like two, G, two GTIs, one downpipe. Um, he ran into the problem where, so for the people who do know who've used the Cobb, when you plug it in, it says, uh, do, would you like to 
basically void your warranty and then it uh, recommends to hook to a battery charger. Now with the manual, it doesn't have to tune your transmission. It doesn't have to tune the TCU, just the ECU. So we don't really have to worry about this problem. Specifically, we ran into the problem where the access port kept thinking that he didn't have enough voltage coming from to, coming from his battery, even though it, it was fully charged and he just drove it the day before. Um, so quick fix to this, what it really seemed like is it just thought that it didn't have enough voltage and it didn't want to crash during the flashing of the TCU. So I highly recommend if you have the DSG for the Mark 7, 100% uh, put it on the battery charger, um, let it run the day before and drive it a little bit if you can, that probably helps a little bit more too. <laughs> well, actually what happened is he had his dome lights on. So we turned all the lights off in the car and everything and it was just enough that it had, a th it thought that it had enough voltage. So it actually went through. But I think what the real problem was is it was, put, it was blocking itself from flashing because it didn't want to crash mid flash because it would have, really screwed it up so point number one if you have a dsg make sure that when you're flashing it you hook it up to a battery charger i really recommend that um if we had known that in the beginning he would have just went and got one and we struggled with it a little bit but we got it figured out point number two and this is the whole relevance round cob all together whether they're tunes the access port and everything so the access port i stand by it 120 percent it's the most for the money the best tool that you can you know your engine codes, you know anything that you need to know from your ECU, as well as, I mean, literally anything. You can clear your codes, and a lot more companies are compatible with that. Like I have, for example, equilibrium tuning as my, um, as my tune going through my cob, and they just have an off the shelf map that you buy from them, or you can do a pro tune and things like that. So the one thing you really need to know and you need to understand before you buy the access port, if you're gonna run the off the shelf maps, you have to understand that Cobb designed it with their products. So if you're running an APR downpipe, a Magnaflow catback, a CTS intake, if you're running a bunch of different brands, you have to remember that when Cobb is in their facility tuning for their maps, they're using their own products. They're not using different products. So if it runs funky because you're running an off the shelf map, it's probably because you don't have the Cobb products on it. So if you're gonna, the one thing I could really recommend is if you're gonna run the off the shelf map, and I'm not saying it's not safe to, I mean, by all means, you're you're voiding your warranty. I mean, you're tuning your car. You have to understand that no matter what, it's not safe as stock. So everybody knows that. But if you're gonna run the off the shelf map and you want it to effectively work the best, I think your best option is to do their downpipe, do their cat back, their intake. If you have all of their products, that's what they base their tune off of. That's like their, their, that's their products. That's the whole point of them making them so they can tune their stuff off of it. Now, if you have a setup like mine, it's mosh posh. Like I've got, like I just said, I don't even know what I have. A CTS uh, Callus downpipe, Magnaflow cat back, and CTS for all the intake stuff and ECS for something else too. But like that, I'd never even used the off-the-shelf map. I think I used it for like a week or two just so the car was okay. But I immediately had it flashed off of what I have done to the car. Now, Cobb may not have their off-the-shelf maps tuned super crazy either, which you have to remember. They're tuning it for it to be safe. They want the next bump up, but for it to still be reliable. That's the whole point for them, is that you can just plug and play. The whole point is for you to have a tune, make a little bit more power, but not be crazy because what would be the point if they're just putting their off the shelf map for anybody running boost pressure enough that it's going to blow your turbo or you're going to start popping lines and shit like that like you got to remember i mean they have to keep it safe and they tune everything off of their own products so I think that's pretty much the biggest point that I keep seeing and I read this off their forums specifically like I just read through a bunch of stuff and I saw a bunch of comments on somebody's video and uh, that's what made me kind of really think about this. So I am in no way critiquing anybody. I'm not critiquing any tunes. I'm simply just standing by the fact that I think the access port is an excellent tool so many options that you have at your own hand like literally in your hand you have a tuner's capability simplified really it's it's crazy and I love it. God. Can't wait for the coilovers, bro. Ah, let's. Sell, oh, we're gonna slam this pig. I don't even care, bro. We're gonna slam this bitch. Like honestly, though, besides the fact that the car is absolutely heinous, this right here is what I made, and this is two pieces. But it's almost like, oh, it's almost clean enough that you almost can't tell that it's two pieces. I literally just made these little four-inch fins to extend that made it look like it's all 
kind of matches a little bit better because strafe sells that and the spats separately and it kind of matches but kind of doesn't so i just just brought it a little more aggressive please ignore the fact that my exhaust holes are empty because it looks awful as soon as we got some like polished exhaust tips coming through there yeah it's gonna look so good i'm so hyped i hope the cob information really helped you guys if you have any questions about it at all i'll try my best to answer any of the questions you have just hit me down in the comments yeah uh, a little bit i'm gonna go pick up meg and i gotta drop her off and get some stuff run some errands we'll run to my dad have a good time so if you like that kind of video yeah let me know down below like would you guys rather see a video that was just like so cob access sport is this this and this have a nice day or do you want a video that's like fun shit fun shit the direct point of the video and then funny shit or you know what i'm saying which one do you prefer do you prefer direct to the point or do you want like vlog style what i like doing That's good shit. <laughs> hey, I got a hot topic question for you guys. I'm just totally curious because I was just watching a video on them and I really don't know which I would take. If you had the choice between a 2019 Camaro ZL1 or a 2019 Voodoo 50, the Mustang, which would you take? Hmm? Let me know in the comments. I'm like interested for this one. And it has nothing to do with today's video. Well, I got stuck in a driveway for 30 minutes. So after digging this out, and it bent the piece I just put on there. Pretty hyped about that. But you know, lowered car stuff. And Meg brought me a sandwich, so it's not, it's, it's not, it's not that bad. Now let's see if we slide all the way down the driveway. Oh, still scraped. Bro. Real life problem. It's always here though. Anytime I get like out towards like Canaan and Enfield, everybody like eyeballs me, like gives me the shittiest looks. I don't know why, if it's a car or what. This dude walks out, eyeballs me, gives me a nasty look. That guy goes out and like side eyes the shit out of me. He's like, bro, <laughs> chill. <laughs> Yo, keep it up. You're gonna have keep me acting up. up. To my father. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> 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 Yo, <laughs> he's like rams in the back of my car. <laughs> What's up, guys? Today, we're reviewing my sled. <laughs> uh, we're gonna do a zero to 60 and check out the launch real quick. Oh, <laughs> dude, that was coming. <laughs> You want to do? You want to get stuff? Hmm? How does that make you feel? Uncomfortable. Because when I sit, it makes me feel really good. <laughs> I can't talk right now. I'm doing Vermont shit. <laughs> official <clears throat> i had a vote on my instagram story as to whether or not you guys wanted to see me and uh hopefully my friend max as soon as he gets free we're gonna go hit a parking lot full of snow and then we're gonna use a tow rope and then just go ham with snowboard and skis it's gonna be hyped stay tuned it'll probably be the next video we're gonna do it in the next couple days because it's supposed to snow i'm so glad you guys wanted to see it because it was gonna happen either way captain look <laughs> What's up, Buck? Oh, I'm such a good boy. Such a good boy. 
You want you want to you come end the video with me? <laughs> hey, step bro, let's go let's go end the video in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, that sounds. Mm. <laughs> What's up, bros? Close the door, bro. I don't want I don't I don't want anybody to hear this. No, no you stay in. You stay. In. We're gonna end it together. We're gonna end the video. <laughs> no, bro. No, no, I won't touch you that much. I just want to like give me that ass. <laughs> Alrighty, bros. We're ending the video off in the bathroom. We're doing it different. <laughs> Two step bros in the bathroom together. Except we're real brothers, so it's even cooler. I hope the Cobb information that I gave you earlier helps you in some kind of way. We're ending off the video here, and as always, do you know the do you know the outro? Do you know it? Do you know? subscribe and like. Not like and subscribe. Uh, no. As always, you guys keep it real. Have a good day. I go hope you guys have a better day after you watch this. Keep on driving. Keep it real. Your boys. We'll catch you in the next one. Before you end it, my Twitch. Close under. Peace! <laughs> <laughs>